Dinner for Shoes, please. Hi, my name is Sarah, and this is the Dinner for Shoes podcast. Um, all right, let's start with what it is. So a lot of people have told me that I have a great podcasting voice. So I was like, what does that mean? What could I podcast about? What could I talk about? And so I thought about the few things that I love in this life. No, I'm kidding. I love everything. But particularly, I love eating really good food in a really great outfit and having great conversation. So Dinner for Shoes is going to be a podcast that's focused on fashion But we will be eating food, uh, trying new things, hopefully most of the time, and kind of like matching up my outfit and the conversation, the fashion conversation that we're having. Or maybe it's like I have a guest on and, you know, we're just talking about anything. But we're going to be matching up the conversation with the outfit, with the food, and it's all going to go together and it's going to be this vibe. Now... Why are vibes so trendy right now? Well, TikTok, honestly, you know, you've got like the cottage core vibe and you've got like the tomato girl summer and quiet luxury, which is honestly kind of what I'm going for today. Thank you, Sophia Richie. Um, and yeah, I, I think that vibes are such a thing right now. So I'm going to create a different vibe uh, every time I film an episode, which will hope, hopefully be uh, once a week. And I'll talk about a different topic and we'll just get into it and try new food. And now, very important is that I have cats. Kit and Trish are going to be part of Dinner for Shoes. Um, This first episode today is going to be focused on Croatia because I just got back from there. Um, I do not travel a lot. Um, I have really been to Disney mostly my whole life. That's thanks to my parents causing us to be Disney freaks. Um, And so I haven't, I really haven't been to many places and I was excited to go to Croatia with my boyfriend Nick for the first time. It was a long flight, so I was a little nervous about that, but made it. Um, And Croatia is kind of (laughs) <laughs> Croatia is kind of like the new Greece. And if you go on TikTok, then you know that like all of these different like Croatia clubs keep popping up and these different destinations and like the waterfalls and there are all these things that that you should do in Croatia. So, um, of course, when it came time to packing for Croatia, I was like all about what I was going to wear. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I'm also going to talk about a topic that I don't see a lot on TikTok um, or really any Instagram, anywhere that's like advertising Croatia. And that's kind of like the culture there and what, you know, people who actually live there wear. Um, Because I always find that to be very interesting. And I think that that's just like the food. That is the way that you learn about a place. So we'll talk about that. Um, And yeah, uh, let's, let's first talk about what... I got to eat and try it and then we'll get into my outfit and we'll get into the thick of it. Um, I got a crepe. Now, one of the things you'll see at a lot of the um, gelato uh, stores is that they have crepes as well. And I had had a savory crepe before. This one place I went to in San Francisco a long time ago. I think it had like ham and cheese in it or something like that. I remember Gruyere cheese because I love Gruyere. But I never had a sweet crepe. And Nick took me for dessert one night in Dubrovnik. And we had Nutella and banana sweet crepe. And it was so fucking good. Um, I loved it. And we had gelato with it, of course. I got to pick the gelato flavors because I consider myself somewhat of an ice cream expert. I love ice cream. It's my favorite dessert. And so today, I ordered a crepe from Crepes Guru in Jersey City. Never heard of it before, but I was like, you know what? Crepes in Croatia. Those things go together. So I ordered a chicken Caesar crepe. And that kind of like ties back in to a specific moment that we had in in Croatia. So Nick and I both wanted to try like the most authentic of the authentic restaurants. We wanted to make sure that we were like really getting a taste of authentic Croatian food, which meant a lot of black rice risotto. And... 
there was cuttlefish in it and it was delicious. And everywhere we went, it was a little bit different and it was great to try all those different like versions of it and iterations. Um, but there was one night where we had had a bit to drink and I was like, you know what? I'm just getting my favorite food. Like I just want a chicken Caesar salad and fries. And I got it. And so I saw that on this crepe menu when I was going through, I was like, which crepe am I going to order for dinner for shoes? Which crepe am I going to order? Um, they had a chicken Caesar salad crepe. So that is what I got. Um, there's also something to say for when you're on vacation and you're kind of like a little homesick in a weird way. And like you miss like that comfort food that you always come back to. And since I'm home now, but I'm also missing Croatia. So I'm missing Croatia, got the crepe, home now, love my Caesar salad. There's like this mix. So that's what we got. Now, Kit will be here in 0.5 seconds. I don't think. Like, it's going to take very long because she sees I'm opening up food. Um, and we're going to try it. Um, also, you will note that I am drinking a basil lemonade. Uh, normally, there would be, like, tequila in this or something. And I'm definitely going to match up my drinks with my outfits and what we're talking about as well. But um, I didn't do that today because... I don't know. I'm just not feeling like drinking. Maybe I'm nervous because this is the first podcast I ever recorded. That's probably why. But I also love my basil sparkling lemonade and I'm drinking it. And the basil leaves are like really, really gross. And I'm using a coaster that says Cigarettes Deluxe uh, Sarah. I don't smoke cigarettes, but my old boss gave me this and uh, I love it and I think it's cool. So I'm using this as a coaster. We're going to get into the outfit, don't worry. I know, like, the weird elephant in the room is this Jeffrey Campbell sandal on the table. But we'll get there. First, we're going to take a bite of the crepe, and we're just going to see what it's about. Okay, this is interesting. I'm going to be brutally honest here. It looks like a little well done. There is no way you can pick this up. I know you're actually supposed to cut a crepe when you eat it, but this is, like, very, very interesting. I added grilled onions to it. The menu also said Ken's... Caesar dressing, which I found to be interesting. It wasn't just like our Caesar dressing. It's Ken's specifically. Okay. Wow. Wow. That is really good. I really like it a lot. The chicken is cut up into very small pieces, which I appreciate. I think specifically in a crepe. Now, this is before I even really got into the crepe part of the crepe, which is very important, obviously. I like that it looks well done. I think that's really important because I love things well done when I say I love things well done I literally love them like burnt which is disgusting but we'll get there um but I yeah I, I like like a finished you know a whole finished crepe with maybe some burnt marks like I don't know I say this like I'm a crepe guru but really I'm not mm, mm, mm. really good okay I love this I will give it, I, I didn't even decide that rating was going to be a part of this podcast, but now it is. Um, I'll give this like an 8.3 out of 10. But what is important to note about it, and the reason why I'm deducting a few points, is just that I feel like it could be warmer. Um, I don't necessarily want it to be piping hot, but I did get this about... 30 minutes ago and like it should still be pretty warm in my opinion it's just a little cold I know Caesar salad's supposed to be cold but it's like it should the temperature is off that's what I'm gonna say um yeah okay so let's get into my outfit so important I am wearing an outfit that's from Zara it's this really cool halter top I love the back of it specifically I like that you can kind of see a hint of my tattoo and I love this little like ring fixture in the back I love some hardware love the white trousers specifically love that for a short gal like me I'm 5'1 um it's got cuffs and these are kind of like a cropped pant I decided for my first ever um podcast to wear this look with a pair of simple silver hoop earrings very thin um, nice and neat. And then these vintage Jeffrey Campbell sandals, which I love them. They're very comfortable. I'm really not much of a heel person all of the time, but I have to say like recently I've been more into them and like able to walk in them, especially when there's a platform on the bottom and on the heel. Let's get into the outfits that I decided to wear in Croatia, packing for Croatia, 
what that was like and just really dive in. Okay, so packing. I had an away trunk that was bigger than I've ever seen in my life, this suitcase. Like, it's huge, but so important because I packed so many freaking outfits. I literally packed outfits so that I could change like three times a day. I packed 13 swimsuits. I was only there for nine days. Tried to wear every single one of them. Um, And then I had a carry-on too, and I had a big backpack. So, like, this is crazy, right? Like, what women pack on vacation versus what men pack. So my boyfriend, who's a relatively new boyfriend in my life, was just like, you really need, like, all of these clothes? I was like, yes, you don't understand. I bought these compression bags from Amazon. They are amazing. You don't need a vacuum. You literally just roll them. Or in my case, I, like, sat on them. And the air comes out the bottom. You can reuse them. I'm going to link them. They were the best things ever. I have so many left over. Um, And they allowed me to pack all these outfits, right? Why do I go crazy packing so many outfits gathering outfits before a trip just to fit the vibe. Well, we clearly know that I'm obsessed with vibes. But, okay, so I'm obsessed with vibes, but like why does each, everything that we do need to be matched like a specific outfit? Because when you're in a place, and I think this is true for even when you just go to like a restaurant, you know, a nice restaurant, You want to really feel good. You want to like digest the food just as much as you digest the vibe. I dress for myself first. Um, That is 100% true. Like I just love my outfits so much that I feel good knowing that like I picked out that look and that I styled the outfit. I guess it makes me feel like I've expressed myself that day or for that occasion or for that restaurant which I think is very important. I think that allows you to feel confident and I think that makes the food taste better in this really weird way. Like, I normally eat dinner by myself in sweatpants with my heating pad on, but I don't feel as good as I do right now in this amazing Zara outfit, like, talking to you. And so, I don't know, I just... I, that's why I think it's important to pack all of those things and if, if you want to, if you don't want to and you want to be like hands free and just pack a few basics and vacation staples, by all means, do it. But for someone who loves fashion, a vacation is an amazing time to express yourself and to dress for the place where you're going. But now let's get into what people actually wear in Croatia because like I said, I've been seeing all these TikToks and they're talking about the places you have to go. Well, these places are great and we went to all of them, but what are people wearing in these places? And what do people wear when they walk down the street? You know, natives of Croatia, people who actually live there, what do they wear? Well, let's talk about like what the big trends are right now. So quiet luxury, like I said, is a huge trend. That's basically when you're sticking to a lot of neutrals, a lot of streamlined, tailored basics, no logos, nothing flashy. You look almost like you're going to work, but you're not. You're cooler than going to work. And it's like my rule for quiet luxury, and this is like kind of controversial, I guess people might say. Um, And it's almost hypocritical, like what I'm about to say. Um, But... I like to think of adding black, like stick to black as much as possible. That's my neutral go-to. I mean, I'm wearing white right now, but I try to stick to black and always like add black when in doubt. So while normally I would have like a purple dress, let's say, and I'd be like, oh, like I need to wear a purple sandal to go with it. And I used to be all like eccentric and quirky, I think. Now I'm in this style phase where I'm like, well, match your like sleek black logoless sunglasses with a black sandal and call it a day. Something like that. Um, But that's like my idea of quiet luxury. And then I also want to bring in my like, my personality and give it a little kick and a little flair. So right now I'm really into like quiet luxury with a pop of color. So that's kind of like what I did when planning my outfits for Croatia. And um, it turns out that quiet luxury is a thing there too. But because it's so hot there, and specifically in the summer, um, you will find that a lot of women are wearing like, 
really cool like neutral toned caftans maybe with like a cool graphic print breezy um something like that a lot of matching sets too I think I saw more matching sets from the vacation crew of course it's impossible to know who's on vacation there and who actually lives there and a lot of the places that we visit visited are tourist hotspots, so you can't really know for sure also one of the main beaches that people like to go to well the locals there really like to go to is called Molina and it's a really quiet beach we literally saw a sign there that said like no loud music here like our patrons prefer to keep it really chill and relax we'll direct you to the nearest beach club if you would like to basically party and all the people who we saw there they were reading books and they were wearing a lot of cheeky bikinis so like the thong bikini the the bikini the cheeky bikini that's really a thing um, in a lot of like plain colors. I didn't see a lot of printed swimsuits, honestly. The other thing to note about Croatia, in Dubrovnik, and also I believe Nick, Nick, my boyfriend, is the um, Game of Thrones uh, expert. I don't even watch it, but there were a lot of scenes from Game of Thrones filmed in both Dubrovnik and Split. I think mostly Dubar Dubrovnik and because of that, I noticed that like body jewelry, like really artful body jewelry is kind of a thing there. Um, a lot of like the little gift shops almost, they not just like body chains that you wear with a swimsuit, but like they'll sell like um, kind of like wearable jewelry as your top sort of situation or you want to like throw it, lay it over, layer it over an outfit or something, like layer it over like a neutral top. Um, and it just like harked back to the whole Game of Thrones armor thing for me. It really spoke to that. So I thought that was very interesting. Um, and then something that you will find when you are on TikTok and you're looking at all of these Croatia videos is that people are talking about like these specific destinations, right? Like Hula Hula Bar and Havar and Carpe Diem were the big like going out clubby bars. What do people wear there? Well, I, we saw a lot of naked dresses, a lot of sheer naked dresses, which we know that's a thing now. So like you could see through, you could see the girls, either lingerie or, uh, you know, underwear um, or swimsuit. And that was definitely a big trend. But also people really seem to dress for themselves. Um, it's definitely a tourist hotspot right now. We saw people from all over the world. Um, there were definitely a lot of people from London. It's an easy flight for them. So we we met a lot of families and people from London. We met a lot of people from America. We met people from all over the world. And that was really cool. So it was cool to see like how everyone dressed to be in Croatia. I'm also going to talk about a few of my outfits specifically. Hands down, I was most excited to wear my Wonderland dress from Zimmerman, which is amazing. It literally has, it's like corseted. Um, Nick had to like button and strap me into it. We didn't even know like all of those moving parts were there until like we put the dress on and I was like, wait, what are these things that are like making me uncomfortable that are underneath the dress? And I was like, oh, I get to be strapped in. It was a very heavy dress. So I'm glad that I was strapped in. It was literally like a 10 pound dress. It had a slit, like a leg slit and seashells were, were um, stitched onto basically the trim of the entire dress. They were yellow. So I accessorized with my little yellow bag um it's got basically it reminds me of actually the photo that I have behind me which is um it's a it's actually a painting of Rio Maggiore in Italy and um it it kind of looks like that there's like a beach scape on the dress and then it says Wonderland and it's just really cool I loved that and then I also got to wear this is awesome but Nick's mom gave me a vintage dress of hers that she like had in her closet it was almost like seersucker it looked seersuckery but it was textured and it was really classy um could pass for like a really cool like 60s dress like kind of like Jackie Kennedy-esque um and she gave it to me to wear I thought I was gonna wear it at night I ended up wearing it during the day but wearing vintage as I already explained is so important to me and it was just such a cool little white dress to wear on vacation swimsuit wise I had some really great pieces from salad and striped some sets that I loved um there was this one eyelet dress which was basically like a naked dress I wore it with a bodysuit underneath a white bodysuit that actually wasn't a swimsuit um and it was belted and then I had this other set that I loved that was like floral print also eyelet and it matched with the bikini but it was like a little sarong skirt and then a crop shirt that went with it which was so freaking cool I wore it with 
with some like layered necklaces from Etika, which is a jewelry company, all beaded, really cool. And I surprised Nick. Nick's favorite drink is an Aperol Spritz. So there was this Rachel Comey dress um, and it's called like the Spritz dress. I will link it. And it literally has, it's a blue gingham mini dress um, and it's got an Aperol Spritz graphic right on the front right here. And the, the best part of it, it's a subtle detail, but the straps are like straws. They're like red and white striped, like a, a standard straw. And of course, I had to have like Nick take a photo of me drinking an Aperol Spritz wearing that dress. <laughs> so that was awesome. I also had this really cool Meshki, which like Meshki is kind of known for um, evening wear. I would say going out looks, party looks. But they recently launched this really cool swim swimwear set that was satin, blue satin. You could wear it in the ocean though, wear it in the water. And it came with a mini skirt, like a wrap mini skirt, halter style bandeau, and it was a thong swimsuit. And I'm telling you, I sometimes feel uncomfortable wearing thong swimsuits. I was so comfortable wearing the swimsuit. It just, I felt like it flattered me. And Nick kept saying like, I feel like that swimsuit was made for you, which I love that. Um, and it's also like my favorite shade of blue, just like this really pretty sky blue, like the color of my mom's eyes actually, which sounds creepy, but she also likes blue and doesn't believe she has blue eyes, but she does. Um, Anyway, I think that that's like really the gist. I had so much fun in Croatia. Um, perhaps we'll talk about Croatia more. Next episode could potentially be on Fashion Week. I'm not sure yet. But anyway, like, subscribe, do whatever you do if you want to keep up with the podcast. Um, I will do links and things. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to figure it out. And this is the first episode. Now leave me with my crepe.